So 3.5 introduces profit maximization. Arguably the most important concept for the test. So when we talk about MR equals MC, it's something you're about to hear over and over and over and over again as we go forward. It's marginal analysis. That's all it is. You're adding something and looking for the change. Marginal revenue equally marginal cost is going to be our rule for profit maximization. What it basically means is that at the point that the marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve on your graph, or even if it's a table of numbers, at the point marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost is where they're going to maximize profit, which is the goal of every business. It's not to maximize revenue. It's not to minimize cost. It's to maximize profit, the amount of money they get to keep when they remove their cost from their revenue. So the way the theory works, as we kind of get into it, is that revenue is the amount of money that you bring in. Cost is the amount of money that you have to spend. When you produce that next unit, you know, if we're producing pizzas, when you produce that next pizza, as long as the marginal revenue of that next unit is greater than the marginal cost of that next unit, you're going to produce it. At any point that it costs more to make it than what you can sell it for, the business will stop production. So you're going to produce all the way up to the point to where you're going to, even if it's one penny, as long as you're going to generate more revenue for that next unit than the cost of the next unit, the business continues production. At any point, the marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue, meaning it costs more to produce it than what you can sell it for, the business stops production. That's the whole rule right there. But it comes up over and over and over again. So you'll use it for all four of the market structures. So when we get back from spring break, or maybe tomorrow, how many people are going to be here tomorrow? Okay, how many people are going to be here? Okay, we may look at introducing some perfect competition. But anyways, MR equals MC is present with each of the four market structures. And so it gives you a stat up there. I mean, in 2017, it was one-sixth of the multiple choice questions. I think there's 66 multiple choice questions. So that tells you 11 of them had something to do with the profit maximizing work. The market was MC. It was also on two out of the three FRQs. It comes up. Was it like three FRQs? Yeah. The, uh, one, the first FRQ is the long FRQ worth 10 points. And then the second and third one are short FRQs worth five points a piece. But it comes up a lot. So as we kind of go forward, make a note. You've got to know this to do well. But the way it works, it does assume every unit can be sold for $10. For right now, the price of the product is the same thing as the marginal revenue. Let's break it down. Marginal, we're looking for change. Revenue is the amount of money bringing in. So the additional revenue from the next unit is the same thing as the price. Whatever you charge it for, that's the additional revenue it's going to bring in. If we sell the pizza for $10, the price is $10, the additional revenue of that next pizza is also $10. So for right now, price and marginal revenue are the same thing. That's your black curve that goes horizontally across your graph. And what we're eventually going to call perfectly elastic when it goes straight like that. But you can see marginal revenue is set at $10. The first unit is $10 of additional revenue. The second unit is $10 of additional revenue. So like I said, right now, it's the price that we're selling the product for. Marginal cost curve. We talked about how it goes down initially. And then it goes back up. It always looks like a Nike check or a Nike swoosh or a check mark. Um, we talked also about how it mirrors the marginal product curve. But for right now, marginal cost is always going to go down. It's going to go back up. The point where marginal cost and marginal revenue intercept each other is going to be the unit that they're going to maximize the profit. So, based on this graph, how many units should this business produce? Four. four. We would say at four units is where the business will maximize profit. Now remember, it's not to maximize revenue. It is not to minimize cost. If they were going to minimize cost, they would only produce two units. But they can earn more money. They can earn a higher profit at four units than they can at two units. If the revenue is equal to the cost, then wouldn't they be making zero profit then? Yeah, because essentially it's it's where it 
it finally comes together. Anything past this point. That's the reason you wouldn't produce five units. Because at that fifth unit, cost is going to become greater than marginal revenue. But you're earning a profit for each of these units leading up to that point. So wouldn't they do three? Is this the last one that profits? Because the fourth one isn't going to make them any money. Yeah, but you're still going to bring in the revenue for it. Remember, these are oversimplified too. So just know the rule, MR equals MC. As long as it's greater than or equal to, you're still going to produce it. Because if they can choose bringing in $30 of revenue or $40 of revenue, they're still going to bring in $40 of revenue even if they break even. Because you're not, if you own a business, you're not going to say, well, I'm not going to sell you this because it's going to make me break even. You're still going to sell it. And so, but it makes it a convenient rule that if you always look for the intersections, you know that's the last unit they're going to produce. So basically, it's a limit. You just say it's not necessarily that they're going to produce that unit. You know that they're not going to produce anything past that point. That's a better way to look at it. That it's a boundary that anything past that point, they're going to take a loss on each additional unit. Okay. But always find an intersection because that's how they're going to phrase it. You know, how many units? Is it going to take, or at what unit is this business going to maximize profit? Well, they're going to maximize it at four because anything past that point, they're going to start losing money. Questions so far on this? All right, so the goal is to maximize profit. It's not to minimize cost. It's not to maximize revenue. It's to maximize profit. So, price is ten dollars. Ten dollars is equal to our marginal revenue right now says that the additional cost, which is your marginal cost, is $5 should you produce that unit. Yes or no? Marginal revenue is 10, marginal cost is 5. Are you going to produce it? Yes. Yes. Because you're going to make a $5 profit. Marginal cost is 9, marginal revenue is 10. Are you going to produce it? Yes. Yes. You have a diminishing profit margin. You're not making as much off that $9 unit, but you're still earning a profit. Businesses are never going to turn down a profit. It doesn't make sense. You're not going to turn away sales because you don't make as big a profit as you want. If you can sell it and you can make money off of it, you're going to sell it. All right. You can't really see it because of that bar, but it says the additional cost for another unit is $11. So marginal cost is 11 marginal revenue is 10 Are you going to produce that unit? No. No, because at that point, you're going to be taking a loss. It doesn't make sense to produce that next unit. So, profit maximizing rule, MR equals MC, which honestly a better way that I like phrasing it is that marginal revenue greater than or equal to marginal cost. Because like we said, if it's equal, you're still going to produce that unit. And so we get in the habit, and sometimes it puts it on the table that there's no point where it's exactly equal. That sometimes it's marginal revenue is greater at the fourth unit and marginal revenue is less at the fifth unit. There's no perfect intersection. And so as long as marginal revenue is greater than or equal to marginal cost, the firm will continue to produce. At any point, marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue, the firm will not. So example, really old example of how they'll present it on the test. So they give you a data set that says that the product price is $85. Automatically, you go, okay, that's my marginal revenue is $85. It says, how many units of output must the firm produce in order to maximize profits? So then, it, conveniently, it already gives you the marginal cost, which is nice. And so you just go down and compare. All right, for the first unit, first unit marginal revenue is 85 marginal cost is 55 Are we going to produce it? Yes. We earn a profit. All right, we know the marginal cost curve initially goes down and it goes back up. We can see that in the data and the numbers they give you for marginal cost. And so 85 is greater than 35, we're going to produce a second. 85 is greater than 60, so we're going to produce a third. 85 is greater than 70, so we're going to produce a fourth. 85 is greater than 80, so we're going to produce the fifth. But then we get the sixth unit, and marginal cost is 90. And so we know for a fact we are not going to produce that sixth unit. The fifth unit is the last point we know of where marginal revenue is still greater than or equal to marginal cost, meaning they're still earning a profit. Questions in? Does that make sense? Perfect. That's it. That's it. That's it.